Okay, so memories for your eyes only, and uh, you will see some of the questions in the previous talk actually applies to my talk, apply to my talk. Okay, so Snapchat is uh, an app that uh, allow, allow people, allows people to do peer-to-peer -peer multimedia communication, chatting, sending uh, video clips. Uh, young people, uh, typically people who are younger than their parents are typical users. And, uh, and uh, recently, besides the app, uh, uh, the external camera in the form of uh, glasses that you visibly see the person taking a, a picture uh, was added. Okay, so adding an external device and thing that are not, uh, that are external, that are wearable, uh, present some problems and uh, one problem is that uh, when, you, when you want to display uh, what you uh, film in your camera, the video clip, you need to move uh, it to a display and then you need the, the, the glasses to, to, to mobile and you need storage and, uh, and you may uh, use different devices to, to display it. So you need essentially cloud, cloud storage that can store your, your snaps, your, your video clips. And uh, you store them so you remember them. It becomes part of your memories and uh, this, is, this is memories. And uh, so I will uh, cover in this talk the, the, the security aspects of, of memories of this uh, cloud storage. Uh, and, and which was released uh, in, uh, in June la last year, sorry, the last year, yes. And, uh, and it's essentially it's a cloud self-storage, I, 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 I save my own memories uh, with security against the, the servers and the engineers of the, the company actually uh, getting it. So, so Snapchat has a chat part, a camera part, which typically which people use, and and and, and a snap part, which is the video the video part, and uh, the the typical uh, teal memories was uh, introduced. The typical use of it was uh, uh, sending uh, snaps from sender to receiver. So you you upload a snap, you you send it to to one of your friends. It's a social network. And then the, the, the recipient on the other side get a no notification that he can download this, this video clip and, and then uh, download it and, and view it and then it uh, disappears. Disappears immediately on, on, on the, from the user device and disappears also uh, after some time also from the, the storage, the central storage. So what is memory? It's a, it was a newer uh, Snapchat offering. One can keep uh, own snaps, as I said. And uh, so the, the question is, uh, if I keep it on the cloud, why should I give uh, my content to, to the cloud? It's against the, the, the philosophy, and it's against uh, privacy, and you don't want every engineer in, in, in charge of this storage having access to my own memories, OK? So this was the idea, and uh, so we need to design a subsystem, and we needed to design it uh, knowing that extensions are coming. We didn't even know that the extension is gonna be an external glass at some point. Then we learned that uh, we had to work on the security of, 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 the, of the, these, gla these glasses called spectacles. And, uh, and we need to to account for it, so the development has to be agile for, for future extensions, and we need to exploit the existing uh, cloud relationships. So this, by the way, how memories look. You, you look at uh, your snaps or your stories or your, your, your camera roll and so on. And, and there, is a, there is this section that, ha that is called My Eyes Only and on the user side, you have to hit, your, to hit a pin or a password, and only then the memory show up on, on, on your device. So it, is, uh, it looks like pin protected. And the users know that if they lose the pin, they lose the memories. I mean, it's just memories, and people lose their memories, yes? 
I don't remember 40 years ago. Okay, so it was introduced, uh, but what was desired from uh, analyzing it from a security point of view? So the user is mobile, he can log in from any device. People use different devices to, to, to log into the, the, the app to their own account. Uh, the content should be made accessible to the user only. The content is not viewable by, by the servers. And even all the servers collude, you still want this PIN or password protection, and uh, which serves two things, by the way. It also serves if somebody take my, 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 uh, my device it's t it, and I didn't put my PIN yet, it's not visible, even, even to, to somebody physically holding the device. And uh, I mean, besides activating the the receipt of, of, of these memories, of these memories which is in my eye only, my eyes only. And we want also the flexibility to be able to replace servers if needed. So server state should be portable, at least at the, the initially. And uh, so this implies that the content should be somewhat encrypted on the server, uh, the user should be able to reconstruct the keys because it moves from device to device and only the user can actually decrypt. So possible solutions, uh, the first solution is a password, rely entirely on the, on, on the, on the pin encryption, but the, we know that it's too weak. Uh, enforce very long password that has 128 bit entropy, good luck with it. Uh, third possibility is that the password encrypts strong uh, key on the local device, but you know this uh, doesn't work if the user moves between devices, no mobility. Uh, we can uh, attempt a, a device to uh, secure hardware module on, 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 the, on, on the cloud, but you know this will mean that uh, no, not easy to change uh, servers. It may work for Apple, but doesn't work for us. So, uh, uh, so given this, this kind of uh, constraints, uh, the engineers uh, look at it and say, oh, it looks impossible. Okay, what does it mean? So here is a principle. What does it mean for a cryptographer where a software engineer says it's impossible? Actually interpret it as cryptographically interesting. Okay, so uh, essentially we need to break something in the setting that makes it impossible. So crypto design of actual engineering problem in the real world is also, in, also involves breaking. You don't break the cryptography, but you break the mental state of thinking about the problem. You have to think outside the box, so you have to break the box. Okay. So we decided we will introduce trust domains, kind of like new servers. We'll do some key management and we will apply multi-party protocol between the servers. And the first idea that comes to you when you do key management is a kind of secret sharing protocol, a variant uh, thereof, between uh, the main server, S, and the key server, KS, and the user. And uh, for a minute, forget the, 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 the typical thing that people usually uh, criticize uh, theoretical papers, you know, you do secret sharing, who tells you that the servers don't talk to each other, forget about it. You know, we'll take care of it. We can build systems. Some things are easy to criticize on a paper than uh, when you really build system and take care of uh, making sure that your assumption will hold. Okay, so if you look at it uh, as it is and you look at the, you are familiar with the crypto literature, the situation looks like something that is called password protected secret sharing, which is uh, an extension of PAIC. Uh, so you can, you can apply it, but you know, this, this primitive is, uh, is too heavy because Fake implies public key, and uh, and uh, you know typically in cryptography, employing employing a given 
in, in, in crypto engineering. If you, take a, if you take the cryptographic primitive as they are, heavy protocols, uh, it, it doesn't, uh, you know, always uh, the most economical and the most useful solution. And, you know, cryptographers build uh, very uh, complex primitives, you know, such and such and da 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 da, da encryption with 30 properties. And uh, it's very nice, very nice intellectually challenging problems, uh, but, uh, you know, in systems. Like now there is a tendency of cryptographers to work, for example, on encryption that has access control built into the encryption. If you know the complexity of access control in real system and how they, they, they morph over the lifetime of the system, you may wonder or if it's really applicable and when it's going to be applicable, maybe in rare cases. But this is just one example. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to pick on anyone. I, I worked on this uh, problem too. <laughs> So, so there is a but there. We cannot, we don't want to use uh, the, the existing one because, uh, you know, the system already exists. This is an incremental step. Uh, some actions are already performed in the system. Take advantage of it. Just repeating the crypto for the sake of repeating the crypto is clumsy performance-wise and, it, you know, it's not good. And, you know, system needs flexibility of design and to account for modularity, and incrementality that comes with the development process. So what we, what we decided to do is to employ uh, our own solution, which will uh, use symmetric cryptography. Uh, there are already in the system authentication flows, like user authentication and, and, and servers have their own uh, public key for signing and, and uh, there is a certificate pinning in the system. So we can take advantage of all, all these. So we build on these exist existing components. So what we have, so what we deployed, so we, we have a general design and we have the first deployment. So the first deployment is essentially a three-party design with, with two servers and, 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 and a user. And uh, of course we have uh, numerous extensions in mind for the lifetime of the system and the emerging needs and the uh, hardening of security and so on. It's a principle. You have to be clairvoyant about uh, what's coming in the system, especially when it's not like the function, the, the primary function of the system, which security usually is not. So we'll have flexible key management. Uh, the snaps, the videos are going to be encrypted with a snap key and there's going to be a master key that is going to encrypt all the keys and then we are going to, do the, to run the protocols on this, on this master key. This is the, the, the typical way to, to compress information or compress the important information in the system and work on it. That's a principle, crypto principle. And we will share and reconstruct the master key only. The master key will be chosen uh, at the user device and key, all the operations will be on, on that master key. So the general structure, uh, we employ two, kind, two layers, authentication layer, and the layering is natural because authentication aspects exist and then we will do the, the master key sharing and recovery, the, the secret sharing like Operation. So secret sharing is a method that you know to, to, to distribute a, a secret among uh, different parties. Uh, it's rarely used commercially. There are uses in uh, military applications. Everybody knows that in a, in a nuclear submarine it's not one person that activates the attack. And that type of secret, a type of secret sharing, uh, it's used um, in um, distributed storage systems. Some of the experimental uh, multi-party computation uh, protocols that run also essentially build on, 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 on linear secret sharing. Okay? So we'll use this uh, three out of three version. And the embedding protocol, the, the environment, the, 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 memories protocol, the memories protocol is the user U logs in, produces content and then deposits it and uh, it can deposit uh, 
also in the, my eyes only, in the secure section of, of, of the storage. And uh, then comes the, the retrieval, which you logs in, and then uh, retrieves the memories. Okay, simple. So there are sessions that you load memories, and there are sessions that you recall your memories. That's like, like in real life, it's real life crypto here. These are memories. And uh, you know, uh, protocol-wise, uh, this depicted. It's uh, similar to 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 the previous uh, the the sender and receiver protocol, but here the same user is the sender and the receiver, and it's a little bit more asynchronous in some sense. Notify the server, puts the memories, and then re retrieve it to to yourself. Okay, and, and uh, now to the protocol. This is the more technical part. And uh, the protocol, I call it give and take protocol. The user uh, creates and essentially gives the key to the servers. And then, then when it wants to read the memories and, 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 and open the my eyes only snaps, it retrieves, it calls back, it takes back the keys from the, the key from the servers. Okay, and then the user will also have a part that it contributes to, to protect against collusion of, of the servers. And we don't care about if he loses the pin, it's his problem. He, he knows about it, or she knows about it. Okay, so the protocol. The, the, the skeleton of the protocol look like, looks like this. There's key generation and sharing, the give part. So the user authenticates to the server. First, path, first factor of authentication, and um, the server gives it a short-term session certificates, essentially signing that you know this server this time started a session, and it gets from the server a high entropy random nonce that is recalled by this server is associated with this user, and the server remembers this n as part of its states. And uh, the user inserts locally, it uh, cho chooses a pin and chooses it uh, locally, and then uh, generates two tokens based on this uh, nonce and, and the password, an encryption token and authentication token based on two uh, key, dis key derivation functions. Think about it, a pseudo-random pseudo function when n is the key and, and p is the value. And, uh, and uh, the user draws the, the master key, m, by which, with which he, it will uh, uh, encrypt uh, the keys that are encrypting the snaps and it generates uh, two tokens, T1 and T2. T1 is the encryption of, of, of the master key with the enc uh, value, and T2 is just the auth value. And um, the user sent to the key server, uh, it certified it itself uh, based on the attestation of, of the server and it gives T1 and T2 to, to KS, the key server. So the, secret, the, the secret sharing that we see it is that uh, T1 and T2 are in the, in SK is KS, the key server, or server of keys, and uh, the password P is at U in the, in the user's head, and N, the nonce, is at S, at the main server, okay? And of course the communication is otherwise protected. And now comes the, the take part. We want to retrieve the key. So we come to, the user comes to even a, a new device. You know, he lost the old device, he has a new phone. Think about it this way. So first he authenticates itself to, to the server gets into his account and, and authenticate itself. And uh, based on this authentication, it uh, gets from the main server the nonce, N. 
and uh, sh again short-lived uh, session certificate and a signed challenge CH with the signature of the server. Uh, the user itself inserts the, the, the pin to, to regenerate ANC and OAuth because they are a function of N and P, remember, as a two key derivation function, two pseudorandom functions. Um, and uh, send to the key server the, the certificate uh, from the, the, the session certificate. The response Oops. The response to the uh, challenge, which is just an encryption with the authentication token of the cha challenge. Remember, the challenge is signed by the key server, and then sends, the response is sent by the server, and the response is sent to the key server. So the key server can uh, verify both the challenge, because it's the sign part, and uh, the response. And uh, the key server is the auth token, so has shared the key. And, uh, and uh, it presents the challenge, the signature on the challenge, together with the session certificate and the respond. And the key server ch check the signature uh, check the response is the challenge in the response to, is the right response to the challenge and if so it sends uh, the token t1 which is the encryption of the master key under under the uh, the the enc key and this enables the user to retrieve the key so it's a, give, it's a give to the two servers and some protocol between them, exploiting the existing flows in the system, and then recollection of the snaps and the key portions, proving that you can, you can do it, being able to do it with the pin, and you have the master key, you can decrypt the keys, and you can decrypt the, the, the snaps. And you can de get the content. So the servers, both uh, the, key, the main server and the key server, each by itself cannot perform uh, offline uh, pin attacks uh, by themselves because uh, the key, which is a long, long, uh, long message, is missing to the main server, and the nonce n is missing from the from the uh, the key server. Uh, in, 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 in its form, and the, and, and the pin is kind of garbled into the, the tokens that are in the key server. And uh, if the server get, get together, they still have uh, the pin protection, and of course you, you take care of it by, by having your pseudorandom function having some uh, work factor. Other users uh, need the two-factor, so it's protected against uh, other users and the sessions are protected with uh, uh, TLS. And, and, and that's the protocol. S is the center of the authentication and uh, authentication verification, and the user itself is the center of key management. Everything is, 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 is built, given, recollected, and, and, and recovered only at the user's current device, what, whichever current device it is. So we combined authentication, signing, secret sharing, password-based derivation, uh, key, de key derivation functions. Uh, to get this, the protocol is agile and extendable. We can extend it to changing of the pin, uh, changing of the key. In the future, we have ways to do to increase the, the servers if we want more trust, and, and it's, it, it can be built on, 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 on what we have, but do it a little bit uh, uh, as, as we want to adapt it. And uh, we, we, can, we can exploit polynomial-based secret sharing in the future, um, and we can get randomness from our servers and, and so on. And uh, 
we know how to do it. We, you know, the basic thing is implemented, and the first thing is to, to really run it this way and, 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 and fortify the, the, uh, the idea that you have two separate uh, servers and take care of this, and, and once this is done right, the, the extensions of the trust domains will be done right. And, and you know, Rome was not built in, in a day, and so are systems. It's something to take into account. Uh, okay, I, I said all this, uh, and I just want to, to recap that, uh, you know, you often, often you see multi-server based security and people believe it's theoretical, but with the right risk or, or analysis and trust model and system understanding and, 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 and hardening, uh, it can actually give you uh, real-world security, and, and, and we, we implemented it uh, in this case. So this is a tool not to be uh, forgotten. I mean, secret sharing does not exist only to, to write pa uh, papers about. Uh, okay, so this building on the system flow, that's very important. The system exists, and you build them layer by layer by layer. And uh, trust variations on cloud server is possible. Uh, and the principle is, uh, you know, in practice versus theory. So the principle that was applied here is, uh, is, is a bit of sophistication which gives you a lot of miles. So we are at the, at the, at the era where politically correct, correctness is claimed to be dead. But I advocate that this principle is important and I call it industrially correct. Okay? Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Monty. Maybe we have time for one question, if there's a quick question. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm interested in how much key stretching you're able to do. If I understand the design correctly, the KDF step takes place on the user device. When we did something similar to this in Firefox accounts a couple of years ago, we felt very constrained by the low power devices on that side. Can you tell us Scrip, Bcrypt, PB, KDF? Uh, yeah, of course, that was the problem. There was an array of all the possible uh, devices, and, uh, and we settled on, on, on the one that uh, we could support and wanted to support. There, was, there were performance engineers that are exactly for that, and all, all this was totally checked. I mean, I'm, I, as I said at the beginning, this, this talk does not cover all the aspects of, of the design here. There are many, many other layers. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mati.